Hi, it's Danielle. Uh, Casey and I are off this week, mostly just recovering from our, from Bolo still. Just really, whew, we needed some time. But in it, our place of doing a new episode, we again wanted to bring you a classic episode. This is one of Casey and I's favorite episodes um, from back in 2017. And it features uh, Miss June Diane Raphael sort of giving us a piece of advice, an expression, if you will, that we still use to this day. It's, it's, I, I've used it recently, which is something Casey and I say all the time now, which is, I'm not going to take that on. And it really, this is sort of the beginning of that when she told us about it and we were stunned and amazed and it sort of became a tagline, which, you know, every show wants something to, you know, be a tagline. Of course, it's what you dream of. We, Casey and I just had hoped it would come from us. Instead, it came from one of our nearest and dearest, Miss June Diane. Um, and we're happy. And it even became a t-shirt for us, which, you know, anyone who wants to go to Podswag, please go purchase it yourself. Uh, but that's not the reason for the season. The reason for the season, it was a piece of advice that we still follow to this day. And this episode also features our dear, dear friend, Brian Moylan, who is, you know, an expert on The Real Housewives and never fails to make us laugh, make us smile, and teach us something. So without further ado, um, we present this classic episode um, called Mystic Mistake, episode 88, back early. Um, And we'll be back next week, but I just want to leave you guys with an image, which is Mary Cosby eating fake snow in the reunion, Um, thinking it was real snow. That is an image I hope never leaves your mind. It's certainly not going to eat mine. She just loves snow, and I appreciate that. I think I would do the same, frankly, but just I wanted to leave everybody with a a smile, a little piece of appreciation in this week. See you guys next week. Enjoy. everybody welcome to bitch sesh i'm your host danielle schneider and casey wilson is not with us as you guys know tonight but she will be back next week when we do our live largo show our halloween show i think there's still a few tickets left it's wednesday october 25th at largo you can check the website um i think there's a few tickets left but please come costumed casey and i are and April have some amazing costumes planned. Last year, it was one of the most fun days of my entire life, of my entire year. It was, it's a highlight. So if you're in town and can make it, it's so much fun and it's so silly and it's so stupid and there will be prizes and awards and lots of special treats. Adam Pally is our guest for the evening. It's going to be a fun show. So, and if you don't get to come to the live thing, you will you will hear it on the podcast. But those of you that are in town, you don't want to miss because it is so much fun. But you guys, we have a special co-host tonight that I think, I mean, I'm almost in tears because I'm so excited that she's here and maybe there's something wrong with me. But um, because everybody knows that I cry when I get like super happy and super weird. I cried when someone insulted Erica Jane. I have issues. (laughs) (laughs) But this co-host is a dear friend. Some would say she is the third co-host of Bitch Sesh. Um, she's sort of the the ghost of Vicky past, as, <laughs> as I'd like to say. And people have been demanding that she return. And it's been a year. Wow. Has it? So everybody missed June Diane. I'm so happy to be here, Danielle. And <laughs> hi. I feel that I've spent this year having a baby, getting really like focused on activist work. Mm-hmm. And frankly, it I've been really selfish. <laughs> you have been. I've I mean, been really selfish. You have. I know you, the country needs you and I know your babies need you. And of course you have a husband as well. It hasn't been but right though. We needed you and you haven't been here for us. I know. I know. And I feel like I'm happy to be back here because I've kind of slipped away from the franchise in general. And that's a hard thing to admit. I'm surprised you admitted it out loud. (laughs) (laughs) To myself, I knew like certain weeks were passing and I wasn't consuming in the way that has always felt so right, which is just constant, like going from one, you know, city to another with 
usually a week overlap. Yeah, like a just, wild abandon. Yeah. Like one, <laughs> one city on top of the next, not knowing where one ended and one began. Yes. Um, I haven't totally been able to follow. Now, when you're away from it, do, does your body feel it? Do you, is it, it well, what's you so need interesting it? about this is like, in these troubled times, I feel like I've needed these women more than ever. Mm-hmm. And it's been really hard for me to get to them. <laughs> 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 and so, so and how does that manifest itself so in that? well I'm I'm simply falling asleep <laughs> you know there's no other way to put it that they're not I mean it's hard to say like the thresh, threshold for like a good tv show is just simply staying awake <laughs> I, I mean as a mom and I'm not even a new mom but as a mom of a four-year-old with a busy life and demands on my life if I I can barely keep it awake. Like the sun goes down and I and can't keep my eyes a flutter. Like I just, that's to me, if I can, if I can see the opening credits and the end credits of a television program, then it deserves <laughs> an Emmy award <laughs> because I get in that bed really early mm-hmm. and I'm, you know, I've really been sleeping. I've been sleeping <laughs> on sleep. all of this. And now can I ask you, because, because you've been away for so long, yeah. so much has happened in the housewives world. I mean, Phaedra Parks is now gone from the house yeah. from the house of Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I caught that. Oh, good. I okay. think I'm pretty much up to date. <laughs> yeah, no, what about Luann falling in the bushes? Not once, but twice. I did see that. And how... <laughs> so <laughs> so when I say I was sleeping through this, <laughs> I guess what I mean is I haven't been as... I've probably been watching them like maybe the next day. Wow. <laughs> 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 that is when tough. I say that I'm rough. embarrassingly behind. I mean, like it's usually a day two. Yeah, it means you woke up the next morning and <laughs> yes, got it yes. before you woke with a cup of joe. Yeah, but before your kids have awoken or while your kids were awoke. Yeah, so I've I'm pretty much caught caught up on all of them. Um, no, I have I have seen I did see New York. Mm-hmm. I you know I'm I'm pretty much up to date on OC. You have you'll every once in a while text me. And say like, something. Like, you know, there's a lag time. And yes. that's not normal yeah. for me. And that's not something I'm proud of. <laughs> I know. Usually on a text chain about the housewives, you're in Ahead it. of the you're, game. You're ahead of the game. It's you're something I pride myself st- You're in. starting the text chain. I know. I know. And the I fact know. that sometimes you don't chime in on the text chain was alarming. And then we got used to it. As you get used to anything. <sighs> this is and a real come to <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I know. And I've been, honestly, I've had the thought, like, they're going to take me off the chain. <laughs> and you like, know what? <laughs> you might. And honestly, there have been some. <laughs> no, I know there have been. And that's as hard as and it is And your sister is on them. I and is that tough for you? Me. I know. <laughs> no, because I've let her go forward. And, you know, when a, a soldier has fallen, it's like, I want the team to continue on without Thank me. You. I really do. But I, I wish I, I wish I was ahead of it. You but know? you're still that wounded soldier laying I there. Know. You're not dead yet. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so we could come back and get you. Thank you. So, you know, it just depends if you show signs of life. I know. And I look, I'm here. I know this is a, a step forward. And by in here, region. I mean in my own Yeah, home. we came to June. Everyone <laughs> should know that we left our own nook yeah. and said to June, we will come to right. you and she said, please do. Yeah. When I say I made an effort, like I'm in pajamas <laughs> on my couch. <laughs> but we were happy too. That's how bad and we wanted you. So thrilled to be I here. would like to say that, June Diane, you have made some changes since you've last been on the podcast. In one, you took your own advice and you have cut your hair. Whoa, Danielle. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Now I have had shorter hair. Yes. And here's the thing that I'm going to say about age and hair appropriateness. I think that there's a version of short hair that actually makes women look younger. I think we're seeing it on Tamara right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. So to me. Not on TV, but in her Instagram. In her Instagram, of course. Sorry. Like, I think we're seeing that that hair, that long hair was a burden on her. Mm -hmm. And so actually it's not about like, oh, you can't have longer hair when you're older. You can have whatever hair you want. I mean, you know, (laughs) within reason. (laughs) I knew that that statement did not ring true. As you said it, you couldn't even, you couldn't even. But it actually, it. it doesn't. I guess my point is like, it doesn't look matronly at all. No, and I hope no, you no. think the same of mine, which is up in a bun right now. Yeah, but, but I've like, seen it. You've in its seen it force. down, mm-hmm. and it's actually like a fresher 
cut. I think the troubling thing about short hair for me is I feel like, I mean, I talked about this at the last Halloween show. Mm -hmm. Like I've been on a journey back to my goal weight, (laughs) you know, postpartum. You look amazing. Thank you. But, Mm -hmm. but cutting that hair was also like cutting the cord of like, I don't have my hair to protect me anymore. And I think what we see with a lot of the housewives is this hair becomes like a layer of protection well, for Tinsley, them. of course. Of course. But it is her armor. Mm-hmm. And those curls are her and armor. And those lashes. Yeah. I mean, all of it. All of it. Whereas Carol, who is a woman older than all of the women, of, except for maybe Vicky, Carol might be the oldest in all the franchises. And she Whoa. looks the freshest and the youngest, I would say. Agree to disagree. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I love Carol. I love everything that she represents. I love the life she's leading. Mm -hmm. I think she plays into the whimsy of it all a bit much. Like the cat lady with the weird couch that is scratched up by cats and dogs and naming them all baby like that. Yeah. Like I think she's started to perform herself a little bit in this past season. And like in her testimonials, I think she knows what works for her and I'm not finding it to be like authentically Carol anymore. <gasps> wow, June. This I is opening know. my eyes. Cause I didn't think of it, but now I, and it's I like, know. Adam's great, but I, what's going on there? Well, I don't, I believe they are not together anymore. Oh, I mean, I believe they are not together. Here's what I think. I think you're a woman in your 40s and you want a relationship. Like, you don't start writing a cookbook with a 20-something. She's in her 50s. Okay, 50s. Like, Uh with your boyfriend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that to me is like a lesson learned years ago. Yeah. Like, that's a fucking disaster. Oh, completely. A complete disaster. Oh, yeah. The minute they did it, it, I also don't think they should have moved in together. No. And I mean, I know she regretted that and she, you know, the that's not happening anymore. But Mm -hmm. like, I feel like there were mistakes that she has, is willingly not learning. She should have known better. Her life experience, which is the one thing we do have as as we age, especially for women, we have life experience and we learn from our life experiences to go into those two situations without her eyes wide open was strange. It's just odd to me. Mm -hmm. No, I hear you. Okay. You're right. I dislike her. (laughs) (laughs) No, I love her. No, I mean, no, I love her, but like, I'm just like, Mm-hmm. it's something about it is not as appealing to me anymore. I'm like I used to look at her life, like Carrie Bradshaw, like yes. I want it all, you me know, too. but there's something about it now where I'm like, what's going on there? I don't know that it's as realized as we might think it. Do you it think is, that she's not realized to herself? Jealous. Like, do you think that she is, that she knows what's going on? And listen, I think the- she has an eating disorder. Wow. I think, yes, of course. You think she has an eating disorder? <laughs> yes, and I think the way she was sort of so obsessed with what's-her-face's eating disorder, I think she loves being skinny. Mm-hmm. I think, like, there's a real currency in being skinny for her mm. and being the skinniest person in the room. Well, she is. By well, and she always is. But, like, I think that it's... I don't see her doing the self-reflection that I guess I hope to be doing in my 50s. yeah. I hear that. I hear that. I mean, she has been through so much trauma that I think maybe she's a little arrested at that age. And that I have sympathy for that. Yeah. Wow. You really, well, that's what, one of the things I really love about having you on the podcast, June, is that you make us look at it from a deeper <laughs> yeah, I wish I could enjoy angle. them. You said it. something the last time you were here, because I was defending David Bedore and I was defending a little bit. And I was defending what's her name's husband. Oh, I've just blanked on her. Kelly. Kelly's husband, who she is oh, now divorcing. How could you? And She's I said, now divorcing him? They're getting divorced. Oh, wow. Yeah. What about Jolie? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Good question, June. You're the only one that's asked that when we have broken this news to people. No one seems concerned about Jolie. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the fact that that name came right to your for like you didn't know they're divorced and yet you have the name of their child like imprinted on your brain <laughs> makes me gives well, me some I joy. I do feel she was named after Angelina. Oh, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> for sure. Which again, part of the but I said, well, don't you think that there is something in that relationship and he listens to her and you said, <laughs> forget, look, we all love when men listen to their wives. <laughs> was that exposed me in a way like to myself so no, it exposed me to myself is what I mean understood, understood. <laughs> that I saw myself for what I was <laughs> and it was it seems pretty basic yeah but you know what I mean like yeah we can all fool ourselves into believing something is a sensitive man and like oh no he's a good guy just yeah. because like he listens to someone blather on <laughs> Listen to some crazy person just speak at him and we're like, that's a good man. <laughs> just because like he doesn't run away. But yeah, so that was, you know, seeing that sure. was a, a real deep dive into myself. Sure. And so I appreciated that and was frightened by it. Look, and I want to stay in the light. You know, I don't want to <laughs> see the things I see. I'd love to enjoy it like, you know, any viewer. But unfortunately, it's hard. Mm hmm. It's getting harder for me to see these women because something happens to them on reality shows. Like they start performing themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They start becoming aware of the cameras after they've seen themselves on TV. And then there's this like interesting thing that happens where it's like sometimes you see them more clearly when they start performing themselves. Oh, yeah. Like it's so fascinating. I think we really saw that with Vicky. Oh, Yeah. And we'll get into that. Yes, we will. We really have to deep dive on Vicky. And we got to talk about Peggy, too. But. Yes, we really have to talk about Peggy. <laughs> and we will talk about that in a second. One last thing, and yeah. then we'll take a little commercial break and come back and discuss that. Housewives, now, you, as a person that is good at uh, sort of like some life advice, you know, with, with the haircutting and other things that you've spoken to our audience about and spoken to me in my personal life about, you said something that changed me a few months ago, you had had a tragedy happen, which is <laughs> <laughs> that your car had gotten stolen yeah. out of your driveway. Mm -hmm. And and I was like, how are you? How is everything? It was not great. And but you said feeling. it was not a great <laughs> feeling. And you said to me, you know what? I'm not taking it on. And that blew <laughs> Because I didn't know you didn't have to take it on. You don't. <laughs> there are a lot of things you don't because have to take, take on. Because I take on everything, mm. because, especially things that happen to me. Yeah, no. So. <laughs> no, those are especially the ones that you should resist. <laughs> so you said, I'm not taking it on. I'm not. And I didn't know it was a choice. It is. Like, I'm not going to take on the identity of someone who's had their car stolen <laughs> from their driveway. Like, I'm not going to take on the experience of that, what that means. I'm not going to take on, like, the world view of the victim <laughs> of auto theft. Like, all that is attached to it, like, I'm, is not for me. <laughs> you know? I, and so I viewed it as, like, I see that that happened over there. <laughs> 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 you know, but that's not anything for me right now. That's not that's mm -mm. not your experience with it. No, no, that's no, no, not no. part of your story. That's not how I identify. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, but it was such an awakening for me because I was like, oh. Oh, and Danielle, I it's so helpful. Right? It's so helpful. And I want to encourage our audience to like things that are happening around yes. them. I'm not taking I'm not that taking on. That. And to me, because it was like, because I take on everything, anything that happens around me, experiences next to me, people <laughs> I don't even know sitting in a bar. And I'm like, what? Are they OK? <laughs> like, I am a sponge. I am yeah. emotional um, and not in a good way. I, I'm an I'm empathetic, but to a fault in where it's like it's almost selfish. You know what I mean? I do. <laughs> I don't think it's selfish for you. I think you are just like a uh, walking nerve of feeling and it's a beautiful quality. And I look, I feel things. Yeah, no, I'm not you don't. <laughs> seeing you feel things quite I deeply. Feel <laughs> a lot, actually. And I actually think because I know the depth of feeling that I'm capable of. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm, I have a really like a strong, rigorous, like, reflex that kicks in, which mm -hmm. is like, that is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have an incident that I can't entirely get into, but uh -huh. with a, a, a 
friend who was sort of making me responsible for an experience, not a good friend at all, uh-huh. but an acquaintance who was making me responsible for something that happened in her life. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of energy coming at me mm-hmm. and I just didn't take it on. Wow. And it's practice. It it's is. It's a muscle. It, it is. is a muscle. And, and I, I had to call on it again and again because I wanted to. And I've said to, I've said it out loud. I've said it in my car. Not taking it on. And I said, I, I, I think I told you, I said it in my car. You know what? Not taking that on. <laughs> <laughs> I like, said it out loud. And then I blasted Freedom 90 by George Michael. <laughs> <laughs> which in the in like a supermarket parking lot, which is a sad moment. If anyone saw me crying, then oh saying I'm God. not taking it on and blasting Freedom 90 towards <laughs> the parking lot, it might be the saddest scene of a movie. I, I wish I had seen it, <laughs> but I will. But I say, felt better. I think that the gift of having children is compartmentalizing to a degree that I never knew was I was capable of, mm-hmm. which is just like. And, and now I'm here and now I'm with them and now I'm with them for only this amount of time and now I'm leaving and now I'm in this place. Like it's forced me to really separate mm-hmm. experiences. I mean, even today I was with someone who I care about and I wanted to impress and I like was holding a Starbucks coffee and didn't put the cap on right and spilled the entire thing on my shirt. Oh. And it wasn't a great feeling, <laughs> but it was also like... <laughs> I <laughs> I know this happened mm-hmm. and it's on a white t-shirt. Yeah. And I don't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like what this says about me. I feel messy. Uh-huh. I feel gross. I feel sticky. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I actually feel don't feel good. But it's like I'm going I'm not gonna take this on right now. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm not. not taking this on. Yeah, and I just said I just spilled coffee all over myself. <laughs> you know, and and then you moved on. And then we moved on. Yeah. And I have, all I have to say is freedom. <laughs> freedom. <laughs> freedom. You got to give <laughs> what you think. <laughs> all right. We're going to come back with our guest and with some, uh, let's get into OC when we get back from our Ooh. commercial. But guess what? We're not going to take it on. And we're back with Miss June Diane Raphael. And guys, we have such a Fucking, and I'm saying fucking because that's how good. This is a star-loaded show. I mean, this I is... so, too. If Casey can't be here, like, this is the best of the best. And we have just a fan favorite, our favorite, here from the other coast, Housewives recapper genius Erica Jane Ghostwriter... Brian J. Moylan. Hi, guys. Hi. So excited to have you here. I am so excited to be here and finally meet June Diane in person. <laughs> is she not as wonderful as you thought and, she'd be? And I am like moved by this don't take it on don't thing. Take it on. It's don't like take a it on. whole it is, philosophy. Right? And I had a very similar experience when I was in my early 20s. Things were not going well. And I was, I lived in Washington, D.C. in like the ghetto. Uh-huh. And I... Um, was asleep in my apartment and someone <laughs> broke into my apartment and robbed me while I was asleep. <laughs> oh, and I like so woke sorry. up and I was like, oh, I got robbed. And I like called the police and whatever. And then as soon as I left the house, it was like, that I'm not taking that. this on. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then I'd like be like. specific to like getting the wrong. Getting your property stolen. Yeah. yeah. Well, it yeah. is and a real would, invasion. Right. And then I would tell people like, oh, yeah, I got robbed, you know, whatever. And they'd be like, oh, my God, this is so bad. I was like, mm, whatever, girl. Like, it <laughs> just like. Because you know what it is? I think when you get robbed, it's like you're a victim in like the weirdest way because someone stole your stuff and it's so invasive. And someone was right near you. And someone was yes. right near you and you didn't know. So there's an yes. element that's so embarrassing and sh- like shameful yeah. in a very yes. strange way that I think that's what we can't take off. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's no. And I, and I feel like when things are like at that time in my life, there was a lot happening and I just did not have time mm-hmm. for that. And when things yeah. are going well, then I, I'm like Danielle, it's like, I have time for all my friends problems and everybody. Yeah. Oh, I'm worried about mm-hmm. them, whatever. But when shit's going down, I'm just like, Nope. Wow. Not today, Good Mary. For you. Good not today, wow. Mary. I'm not taking it on. Yeah. I love it. But you know what we're going to take on right now is some OC. Now, well, I'll tell you who's taking a lot on <laughs> is one Miss Shannon Bidur. Oh, my God. Talk Shannon about taking things on. taking it all on. Now, June and Brian, I haven't spoken to you since this new season of 
of of OC and and June, you're a connoisseur of the yeah. OC, and and I, what's your take on Shannon? Both of you, but in in that order, what's your take on Shannon this season? I listen. One of the reasons why I've always loved the housewives in general is the chance to see. I mean, as an actor, to <laughs> see people living out loud and so available in their you know mania like and so free to show it is just it it feels like a gift yeah it is a gift and so to see shannon go through a midlife crisis a midlife crisis mm-hmm. is what we're watching a crisis so boldly and baldly <laughs> is is to me it's a it's it's really compelling television, and I can't take my eyeballs off of it. Mm-hmm. I agree with you, however, and I think it was not this episode, the one before that when Deco tells her that David yes. was grilling them Deco. at the party, whatever. <laughs> and then this is the name we're all saying, right? Like that is, this is just a, like accepting Deco. Yes, on Coco. We're all saying Deco and Deco. Coco, and the girls who I can't differentiate from each yeah, other, I mean, and they're... both look like thirty-five-year-old receptionists. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was sh- so Deco's like, oh, David was grilling me about whatever cancer, blah, blah, blah. And then Shannon gets in the car and just like freaks out. And it's like, Shannon, don't take this on. Like, don't take it she, on. It's she like, has, she freaks out about everything. And she has like such an insane reaction to every single little thing. It must be exhausting it to is. Be Shannon. It is. I mean, she is dysregulated. Yo. Absolutely. At, at a minimum. <laughs> yeah. At a minimum. And that is, that is her on, t- like, that is her at best. Yeah. And it's hard because it's like we're all, I mean, she's so open about the the weight mm-hmm. gain and the. So much, when she, every episode that she's like, well, I see they're serving something fried tonight. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, my God. <laughs> or then that montage of David eating <laughs> chips oh, in no. front of her. Oh, the, the chip <sighs> montage was cool. Well, and, yeah. and also it's like David is so aggressively getting more and more fit. Yeah. Yes. And that is a very aggressive choice on his part. Mm-hmm. Well, and know what mm-hmm. I think? And he's working out and getting ripped and then he will kill her. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, you guys, that's what we're watching preparation for. I was thinking the other day <laughs> for him to plan like an a execu- crazy <laughs> execution of his wife. I'm in a weird place, whatever. And like, and then escape through the night and like, never be heard from again with like one backpack and live off the land. Yes. And chips and, and like the mud run of a lifetime. <laughs> 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 David Bedore's Mud oh, Run from the Law. I mean, if that's not a movie, it's just called Mud I, Run. <laughs> I feel like that's what we're watching. I mean, it, it's a Sunday film training. festival hit. That is mud what he's run. training for. The way wow. he looked at oh her at God. that dinner it's when like, he's so angry that she's she grew up so rich. Yeah. He's, he hates this woman. Yeah. I feel like David Bedore is the opposite of... Of Julia Roberts in Sleeping with the Enemy. Yes. Like he's training to be the abuser. Wow. Yes. And well, but I was thinking about this and Mm -hmm. I feel like David would hire a hitman to kill Shannon. But otherwise, David is never going to leave Shannon. I think David oh. is way oh, too much of a pussy to leave Shannon. I, I think, think he is way too passive, and he's waiting for Shannon. He is trying to drive Shannon to such an extreme that she will dump him. Like, is he? Mm. What, what's um? Mm. You know the 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 first wife in the attic. Um, oh. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm t- Mr. Rothschild, um, Jane Eyre. Oh, yes, right, of course. Yes, the yes. first wife in the attic. Wow. I okay. Mean, okay. So what I think is happening between the two of them is I don't I don't think he'll ever leave her. Wow. Also, because okay. I feel you do think he'll kill. Her. I think he'll ki- he might kill her, <laughs> but I don't think he'll leave her because what I saw at that dinner table scene was someone who has very little self worth and has always felt like the poor kid and mm-hmm. felt ashamed about it and he's always like held her up on this pedestal mm-hmm. of like she knows all the right things and she comes from money and so I think he needs the her. embodiment of Billy Joel song Uptown yes <laughs> yes she's an uptown girl but mm-hmm. I also think he hates her well yeah. we I also felt that. I felt that 
when he said, "Why oh, your mom can't even like, you know, uh, fill her gas tank or like the first time she drove her car, it's like yeah, anyone could make that mistake. I don't think that that's so of a rich person. That's a person that just isn't used to driving. Well, he has contempt. Yeah. And I as think, my mother always said, contempt is the end of a marriage. It's true. David, I think David is reliving his relationship with his mother with Shannon. I think that's, I think he's been domineered by women his whole life. Cause remember the mother showed up at Lock yes, Women yeah. of Rock concert and of she's course. a monster <laughs> in the same way that Shannon is. <laughs> what was the concert called? David, it was Lock, Lock the wi- Girls Ladies of, of Rock. rock. It, it doesn't quite make sense. And dream catcher. Oh my God. Dream catcher. Dream catcher. Oh. oh of course. <laughs> I mean, wow. Well, I don't know what's going to happen, but. It has been tough. I I hate saying this out loud because I don't long for this, but I do think Shannon should get off of TV. I think that is wise. I think it's not. It's helpful for for her in the sense that, like, David was probably going to leave her anyway. This relationship wasn't going anywhere. She has a support system of, like, human beings of her audience that Mm -hmm. is there for her. and, And money of her own. Yes, and money of her own now. Um, not that she wouldn't have gotten any in the divorce, right. but I think she is at a breaking point. And I don't think this relationship on the television in front of the world is, it was, but now it is no longer helpful. I agree. I feel like it's it's a Kim mm. Richards situation where it's like, I know you need to be on TV, but someone needs to get you off TV for your own good. Mm-hmm. Wow, I mean, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. It's you don't want. I mean, I don't want to be right about reality. I'm TV with you, show. Diane. I love I like, watching I, it. I find her to be hilarious, and I feel for her. You know, I mm-hmm. she's not a well person. No, no, no. 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 And I am very. Um, intrigued about we've never seen like a weight storyline on the housewives before which i think is Mm -hmm. exceptionally relatable yes and uh you know we've all been through that and And gone through those periods and they showed us flashbacks of her on the same couch yeah with the same person and that was a tough to see kind of that's why i've always really related to shannon like Mm -hmm. i I, that's why i do love her being on tv because i feel like it's so relatable what she's going through which is like Went through a depression, mm-hmm. not happy, gained weight. You know, it's like we can all, I can really understand. Yeah, and okay. actually, I'm kind of like, I'm looking at some of these other people, like Lydia and her fucking husband. Oh, I hate And I'm like, they could, I've never seen people on TV where I'm like, you both would be so much better looking with 20 pounds on you. Oh, completely. Oh, I think the husband is hot. Oh, I hate him. He's Ew. They're both awful. He's so pointy. I don't know. There's something Lydia, about him. Lydia is... They're tough so awful. to look at. I, and I don't mean, like, I just mean, like, weight-wise and personality-wise. Like, I, I, I hate her. I, I find hate her, her both the meanest and the most boring housewife. Yeah. I, it, uh, the combination of her, the, the fact that she's back, her and her husband, they're, they're holier-than-thou religious bullshit where she's oh. scared of a psychic because, yes. uh, like, I don't even want to be in the same room as a psychic and poor, that poor psychic who never got her turn. Mystic Here's Michaela. She, Mystic Michaela, who was hoping oh this God, was going to be... Michaela. This was going to be her, you know, you know... Yeah, Alison East, Dubois. Yeah, Alison Dubois, Dubois made a... Dubois <laughs> <laughs> made an impression on all of us that we'll never forget. And here yeah. Mystic Michaela was yeah, thinking was this was her time and it wasn't she her came time. and went. I just think... Like, like Lydia is, I've never described someone this way, but she is basic. Yes. She is just she is, like yes. a f- basic, basic bitch. But she's also a mean little cunt. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and I, I say that, and that's a word I don't use, but yeah, I we're using think, language I, I don't think we've ever used before. But I've I never think heard she's you use so that word. mean spirited and I don't like and I use that as a word that's just a nasty word and not like you know yeah of course as like an offense to women I just mean like just it's a it's a sharp word and I feel she deserves a sharp word because I think she's nasty and I think she's nasty to Shannon who doesn't deserve it here is is a woman that is clinging and I'm not saying she can't even be bitchy to Shannon but she is so Clinging. undermining and cutting and that and sort of like you're great dismissive yes that's what I want to say to these women like look across the table Shannon 
is shaking right yeah. at at rest like <laughs> nobody said anything nobody is right. made a remark she is and vibrating. a woman yeah, is <laughs> shaking in front of us like just read the fucking room yeah well and she purports to be a christian she can't go to drag queen she can't be around a psychic but it's like you see this woman who is clearly in need I'm in. Yeah. and you are just like and you are Bye, worse i can't deal with you you are worse to her you are worse than even like hey you're mean to like it is dismissive and there yeah. is nothing crueler than m- making someone se- seem crazy yeah. and not worthy of your time that stuff I cannot stand I'd really like to say to her if I ever see her like <laughs> <laughs> just so you know it looks like your prayers aren't working <laughs> <laughs> That I is the feel like she thing I've considers ever herself, say, and I love it. I <laughs> she love considers it. herself like this prayer warrior, like yeah. powerful mm-hmm. prayers, and it's like they are. You, your prayer is not working. Yeah. No. And and it, you know why? Because you know it's why your disingenuous. Prayer, yeah. Because yeah. you're not a good person, and no. you can call yourself a Christian, whatever that means to you. But you're a bad human, and yep. you're mean, and you're shitty, <laughs> and you use your money. You use your money that you did not earn yourself. To, that your father didn't earn himself, that your grandfather Well, and that's earned. what got me really worked up about that episode is when she's going shopping with her mom, who I, I, I'm having issues with, you yeah. know, because I'm just like, you've enabled this behavior. And also, like, this is how wealth moves around in our country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, we well, just watched it. Okay, fine. But, like, <laughs> this is how wealth moves around for white people, yeah. Yeah. which is just like... Here you go. Here you fucking go. Good luck. Open a shitty magazine. Yeah. Open a a mag. Publishing. And I also going to say your prayers aren't working and publishing is dead. Yes. Publishing is dead. So what the fuck are you doing with this magazine? And and at least if you're going to publish something, publish something that's more than just 20,000 watch ads and an article about man caves and how brunch is for bros. That that magazine is so basic. Like her Christianity is so basic. And I love (laughs) that they are sending Lydia (laughs) and a team of like six other women to Iceland to do a review, apparently of the whole entire country. (laughs) For a men's magazine. Because no one knows what men wants to read more than a bunch of middle-aged reality television personalities. Okay, you you are a man. Do you... What's her husband's name? I can't... I don't even uh, remember. Doug. Doug. Okay. (laughs) Like, I know you said Doug is hot, which I take issue with, because to me, like, maybe if you took him feature by feature, you'd find something. Well, I think, like... On paper, if you took yeah. this paper, at a glance, he's conventionally attractive. At a yeah. glance, I'm like, okay. But when I say there's nothing coming off of that body, I mean, I don't mm-hmm. see a a spark. I don't nothing. see no. blood there's moving no through it. No. There is not a sexual pulse no. to him. No. Well, his balls no. have been cut off, and his no, balls at, have been at, cut but off. They have not. <laughs> <laughs> and that I drives know. me like I, I don't think it's funny because it's well, not. Of course, no, it's really. not funny. Joke is so. Basic, like you said, it's all just like. But why would you ever like? Do men want to be? Is there anything about him and his essence that is appealing enough to like start a magazine around? No, not at all. (laughs) Because it's all this inherited, like it's like people looking to do something. Bar, fancy watches, sports cars. It's like this. you know, metrosexual and the lowest common denominator. Yeah. But it feels as of a time gone by, yes. too. Like of the early 2000s when, like, entourage yes. was something that people thought was attainable and satisfying. And yes. it's just stupid bro culture that nobody really ever liked. Yes. yes. And so, and it's just a continuation of that. And who cares? No one. No one. And there are times where she genuinely, I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting really nasty now, but I think I got, this. I don't know how you could get worse than I called her. A there cunt. are times where she honestly looks like a skeleton. Yeah. Like her face is so sunken in that I just like, I can't, I, I don't know. It's really hard for me to watch her on screen. Well, she's just a nasty. She's a nasty. She's a total nasty. I was nasty. excited for her to come back. I actually liked her the first what? time around. What? Yeah. I, she was so not there. This year, at least, she's just awful. She's but. awful. But you know that she's a friend of Lisa Vanderpump's, and Lisa Vanderpump tried to get her on Beverly Hills. <sighs> and they were like, no, she thank you. She can't roll with those horses. Oh, hell no. No. And they, they demoted her to OC. But, I mean, they are having a casting crisis in the OC. If they're bringing back Lydia, I they mean, are. Peggy... 
Oh, I mean. Okay. Okay. What do you have to say about Peggy? (laughs) First of all, I need to say something about Peggy's hair at that dinner with Michaela. (laughs) Mystic Michaela. It was. So it, her hair looked like Shannon Bedore's aura. It was just like <laughs> frazzled and PC and all pointing in the wrong direction. I was looking at Peggy's hair with her like one enormous like gem in the holograms earring. <laughs> and it was just like, oh, okay, so I wa- <laughs> So I watched that dinner scene kind of piecemeal because mm-hmm. I kept on coming back to it. And so I lost like the thread at the beginning of it. There was then, no Okay, fine. <laughs> but- but I kept on looking at Peggy and thinking she was wearing a parka, a parka at uh-huh. the dinner table. Oh, like, oh it yeah, like she was just like, yes, wearing. Collar. Yes, and I was like, oh my god, Peggy's like sat down to dine in a giant like North Face parka, <laughs> um, and I was worried. So here's the thing that I think happened to Peggy. I think, and this is again, it's going to sound crazy, mm-hmm. but I think when Peggy's mom died. Peggy went with her Mm. and I don't think anyone's seen Peggy since. Interesting. Wow. I think Peggy as we like knew her is gone and this is a shell of Peggy and even worse since the cancer scare, because Mm -hmm. now I think she feels like she really is going to like reenact what happened to her mom. Yeah. And I think all the joy and life force yeah. went with Mama Peggy. We saw a glimpse <laughs> of the real Peggy at her, when I think she got yes. a little drunk. At at the t- the, I, for one second, when she started dancing, and I liked yeah, those me moves. Too. Yeah, and I was I like, was like, I like this. this woman. Where has she yes, been? Yes, yes. Yeah. I have thought the same thing. I, I said that last week on the podcast. I was like, I liked this woman today. Yeah. I have not For you guys for a split second. I mean, it was probably <laughs> oh, it, it was, was a gullet. Three seconds. seconds. It was a gullet. But in, a, in all darkness, you look for a glimmer of you hope where you can right. find it. <laughs> Some sort of personality. But I, I also think. don't think that Peggy has shown, I don't think Peggy he wants to be here no, she because not. she's like she I don't want to talk she's about that. Under, she's shutting people down. She's under duress to she, be here, but I don't know from who. Possible Dika? that she agreed to do this and then found out about the three millimeters of cancer, mm-hmm. and then had to do all of that. Because when she started shooting, mm-hmm. she was still like in bandages and stuff. I believe so. Which was means. She? I, I think, think so. so. She said she was yeah. when she did the photo shoot for yeah. gentlemen, no, you're right. gentlemen's cigars Much or whatever. Much like Leanne Locken, but very differently than Leanne Locken. Very different. Oh, my God. We'll get to her. Yeah. So I don't know. But, I mean, something has happened to Peggy. And I really have never quite seen a woman that is as... Um, Not there? Yeah. Fake that man. She seems like a ghost. I likened her to um, a ghost that's haunting a magical baklava. (laughs) And and I feel like that is, that's kind of what she is. I will say she did show her housewife's material for a minute tonight. Because it was like, where have you been? When she said tonight, do you trust your husband? And when she said that, like, uh, she, you know, basically Peggy came out to play. Yes. You know what I mean? And that, it was so unexpected. I mean, we knew it from the preview, but it was so out of personality yes. for her to yes. say that to Shannon. And then she went back in the tortoise shell. Yes. After that, but it was like the tortoise had come out. there are times where I honestly feel like, and this is like, I find Peggy to be spooky. Mm-hmm. There's something spooky about her. Sometimes I feel like I can't see her face. Mm-hmm. Like is I can't it, it her see her. So yeah, I no, can't I, see her face. She hasn't like, let us see her though. I know. You know. I know. No. And, she, that's what's so weird. Is she does not seem interested at all in being on this program. Now listen. A piece of information was revealed. I think <laughs> via Dico that Peggy has been in in America since she was one year old. <laughs> Okay. I we need to spend <laughs> a moment on what, this. April, April, what did you find, it. April? One came one year on every bio. So, okay. it, so it's true. Okay. All right, all right. Because right. you, you okay. were saying that this that can't is be true. Not possible. 
Well, this how is, is your accent? This that is not thick? possible. And uh, how do you and not understand? And she doesn't seem to know like idioms and right. sort of say like catchphrases. Like, like how do you not know what a peanut got, gallery is? Or like a bee in? Uh, she's always like bee in the bonnet. <laughs> like I was, like she doesn't know kind of like just turns of phrases that. Uh, you know, we as a people, we as a collective. Now, even if she didn't, okay. So here's what I'm trying to understand because even if she she spoke Armenian until she went to like, even if there was no English spoken in her house, when she went to elementary school, right? She must have been speaking English. Well, here's my. Or she theory. would at least have learned English starting at six years old and. The kids are using it. the slang. Here's and are, my theory, you know. though, is that a lot of immigrant communities, when they come to this country, sort of stay close together. And so, you know, nicely. like when a lot of like, you know, Jews come over from the old country, they settled yeah. in little like areas where just like a ton of Jews from the old country were. You know what I mean? And that they're Armenian. A lot of people came in from Armenia and that was they all settled together and they all took school together you know what I mean they all come in speaking their language and they don't sort of go outside of the community you know first generation and stuff so I wonder if that has to do with it like it's just like we just didn't venture out that much we didn't have to learn to to get out as much we could really speak our language mostly and learn the this country's language but not really travel um, outside so much yes what's interesting to me is that she came here really pre-language yeah, yeah. so because i have a one-year-old yes who doesn't really who says a couple of things mm-hmm. so I think then we're assuming that her parents spoke no English. So I can understand that. I think Mm -hmm. definitely, you know, she, Armenian was her, you know, and listen Mm -hmm. for the listeners out there. Like I'm a couple, I'm a generations removed from my own immigrant story. So I respectfully am out of my depth about Mm -hmm. the newer immigrant story in America. However, Mm -hmm. It does seem shocking yes. that yes. she's been here since she that was she's one. An English major. I th- yes, no that that's tough. I mean, <laughs> come on. That, I that was part an English I forgot major. about that. Part. <laughs> and I know all those things. I I mean, I mean my that, parents are from America, so I don't know. But come but on, I think once it's just crazy. Once you're an English major, you have fewer excuses as to what because yes. you that is you know you know when you are a doctor or you are you know a med pre med like then you are well versed. First in pre-medical Imagine stuff. if you, you went guys, to a doctor though, and he was like, oh, I, I do not know what that part of the body is called. <laughs> like, it's kind of like the same thing. It's not even just the language, mm-hmm. which is one thing. It's mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. No, you're right. It <laughs> seems like weird... the world is, this is still quite a new experience for yes. her. <laughs> but I feel like Deco had a very similar experience, you know, coming over at a young yes. age. And he doesn't he was have older, any though. of that. No, and he too he was, was like, way older. He was like seven. Yeah, yeah. And he too is like, Peggy, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> so exactly. Like, Peggy, where the fuck have you been? What do you mean you don't know? What do you mean Bees you don't bonnets. know? Yeah, like, what do you mean you don't know monkey in the middle? <laughs> like, you're in the fucking middle. <laughs> and coal in the stocking and like yeah i, mean, I like, guess maybe it's all is it just all those phrases i mean if it like, was just all those phrases it's but it's not that no you're yeah. right it's, it's like she that. has rejected american culture in a way that is very apparent whereas deco it seems like he embraced it and he's into you know like sports yeah. cars and the slang and the clothes and whatever being in america and peggy's like i'm an armenian like that's my you know what i mean that's my thing mm-hmm. she even said that about something she was like oh, oh no she Ar- said that's not the only expression i know is like make me food right <laughs> yeah. was- i'm an armenian that's my slang <laughs> like it was like make me food or something like it was yeah. it was a strange armenian phrase or it, d- it didn't matter like what it boiled down to was like this is what we talk about get me some food <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. When you look at the two of them, like sometimes Digo to me looks like he's 17 years old. Yes. And yes. she looks like she's 55. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> no, That's before enough we there. move on from OC, and I could talk about OC all day with you because I do feel you're a student of it. Vicky this season. <gasps> I need to say something. Yeah. I've been waiting to say this to June, Diane's face. Oh, wow. It's time to fire Vicky. You guys? <laughs> Let me narrate what's happening right now. <laughs> June is taken aback, physically taken aback. She's laughing so as not to cry. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I'm going to make my case. And the case is this, that I feel like 
Vicky what? has <laughs> so alienated herself from everybody else that mm. she's no longer like integral to the show. She's just like off on her own doing her own thing. And she's no longer a part of like any of the stories. And she's held on to her rightness in this Brooks cancer thing, which we're still dealing with because Vicky refuses to admit any culpability whatsoever, or at least say, you know, I'm sorry, guys, this happened and I did something wrong to you. And she is cl- clinging on to her victimhood in such a way that it has alienated her from everybody. And no matter who else they bring on to the show, she she will never be able to get past that. Like she's never going to be able to integrate back into a group because she is so insulated herself from reality. You don't feel like her and Kelly have some tales to spin? <laughs> I feel I feel like Kelly we and we saw it at mm. um the anniversary party. Kelly doesn't want to go sit at the sad girl no. Vicky's all alone table. No. Kelly wants to go sit at the fun party table and I don't blame her cuz I do too. I don't want to go and sit and talk to Vicky about how all the other girls are mean to me. I want to go and have a good time. And I think that's the problem. Anybody new you bring on the show, Vicky's going to be like these girls were all mean to me and they owe me casseroles and apologies. <laughs> and so so you can't so until you get rid of Vicky, you won't be able to get the show out of this morass into which it has descended. Wow. Jan, rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about this a while. Wow, <laughs> because yeah. I knew this day was coming. And it came. Yeah. Okay. This is not expected. <laughs> this is going to happen tonight. Um, Are you okay? Yeah, I will be. <laughs> I... Here's what I agree with. I think she's. it's hard for her to drive story this season. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I'm seeing that. <laughs> um, you know, Brianna's here. Everybody seems like they're doing okay. She's in a healthy relationship. Koto Insurance seems to be thriving. You know, <laughs> we're checking on her heart, but physically, I mean, there's nothing really going on. Right. She's in a decent relationship. But she just has no storylines because she yeah. is in like the silo by herself. However, <laughs> <laughs> I think Vicky Victoria <laughs> Gunvalson is so goddamn watchable. I do not disagree with you. I mean that if she's not up there, by the way, I I would pitch bringing back Gina Kehoe and mm-hmm. seeing if we could get something started with okay. Gina and Vicky and like mm-hmm. just seeing what yeah, was what going there. I don't yeah. disagree with you. Okay. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> so I think there's there's still relationships to repair and maybe bring back. But I feel like watching her just exist. And even when there was a shot of her <laughs> in that crazy fucking outfit going to the I think she was going to coffee with Tamara. Oh, yes, yes. With that that yes. Sh- oh, it's like shirt? A question mark? Yes. <laughs> Why can't these women wear shirts? We saw it with Megan no. tonight. Megan was wearing it's like the craziest a thing in the world. from a it's Victorian the- bordello. It was like, it wasn't even so a shirt. It's so OC though. Like the yeah. OC and Kyle love a shoulder yes. and the cutout and the Yeah, but not this their whole arm showing, just the shoulder. Yes. Yes. Anything like that, my boyfriend and I call Kyle Richard sleeves. Yes. Like, well, See somebody yes. it's like, oh, look, she's wearing Kyle Richards sleeves. Because <laughs> I think it is like at a certain age, we women have decided we don't like our arms, but we yeah. still like our shoulders. That's right. And so <laughs> he's right. Oh my God. If there is just a generation this of resonates. women that decides. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and a fashion right. like empire has been oh born on this and one so self-hating aspect it's of so, an older generation. Well, of that women. shirt, though, it was like the there coffee was shirt. Sho- the coffee yeah. shirt was oh, like, Oh my a god! Shoulder, but then like the a long sleeve, but then a cutout. Yeah, no, there was like sleeve? a long sleeve, but it had a ruffle that went from the sleeve onto the body. Yeah, and then there was like a tank top strap on one side. There but not was the a other. tank top strap. There were no strap. rules and regulations. There, but it was a mystery. <laughs> it looked like a ice dancing costume that oh got into god. an argument with a paper shirt. Oh my like, god, that's it was what insane. It looked like. So when so, but anyway, there's a shot of Vicky walking into the coffee shop. I remember this, and. I was watching her and I was like, she's so off kilter. (laughs) She's so like, there's something so not balanced about her body. Even when she's upright, like you feel like you could 
blow on her and she'd fall over. I thought at that moment too, because I, I watched it too. I was struck by yes. this moment where I was teetered out of there. I was like, she's almost walking out like a pregnant woman. Yes, exactly. You know, yeah, or so she's like she never waddles. worn heels yeah. before she waddles. And there's something so infantile about her that, and yet there's something like very womanly about her. Like mm-hmm. I'm going to say something about Vicki Gunvalson and like how she scoops up these men left and right. Like, oh I feel like God. she, something's going on in the bedroom with Vicky. <laughs> like she's I, up to stuff. I don't, I don't know, know she what anyone to date her. I swear, because I swear to God, like she is doing something in there and I don't know what it is, but these men are coming back for more. Oh yeah, yes. they are. And I think she's a very high sex drive mm-hmm. and I think they are into it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's just something about her. I think she's also like a closeted lesbian who has like deep sexual fantasies about women that she really oh yes if you ever like seen her she's so uncomfortable talking about her vagina other vaginas like seeing Mm -hmm. women's bodies and the discomfort is so scary to her and i think it's covering like these deep sexual fantasies deep sexual lesbian fantasies Wow, I yeah. never you are for peeling sure. it back. <laughs> and, for and sure. in psychology. What is going no, on? No, I just you, see Diane. it. Like she is, I think, attracted to Tamara, repulsed by Tamara. And like when any <laughs> when anyone talks about their vaginas, she's like, ah! I'm like, I gotta go body. Like it's all very and yet I know she's fucking these guys. Yeah. But right. good. she's fucking them. Good. You know what I mean? She's I fucking feel like real. Good. And I have said this. Vicky and Brooks had a sex life all of us could only yes, dream. Of. Oh my I god! Agree. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. When you went into a room, you could smell the sex, <laughs> yes. like yes. in the house. There you were could constantly walk. That's fucking. why Brooks yeah. stayed. She kept Brooks around for, for so long, long after yeah. everyone was like, "No." But I, I agree with your points about Vicky, and I think she is eminently watchable. She, and I, could and watch I think her read that a phone book. We might need to manzode with children her and do a show about her That's and the kids at Kodo. Wow. But, I don't want to see those grandkids though no. but the choice no. is between Vicky and the show and if you're going to save the show you need to get rid of Vicky wow wow <laughs> well on that I think we're going to take a little break <laughs> Wow. Oh, guys, we're back. And June, are you processing? How are you doing? I feel badly for doing this in yeah. your own home. You did do this in her own home. But this was tough. I'm really scared that you might be right. <gasps> wow. wow. I'm really scared that you might be right. Because I don't know. I don't know how they continue on like this. Yeah. They can't unless they keep Vicky and build a cast is, around her. This is two seasons now of her alone. Three. I believe three. Yeah. And we've gotten as much as we can get out of it. Yeah. I mean, that, that's as farther than you could get with any other woman, any other human. Yeah. Without, you know, with all these estrangements. Yeah. I want to say one more thing about OC before we move yeah. on to Dallas real quick. And that is that this Iceland trip is, I've never seen people less looking forward to any <laughs> vacation that has ever been introduced onto Housewives no. ever. Well, none of them are speaking to yeah. each other. Like but also, like, I, I still feel like even in Atlanta, when like basically Candy had been accused of rape by another <laughs> yes. of the women, they were all like, we're going to Hawaii. So <laughs> like everybody was okay. Cause like, I get you all want to go to Hawaii. Yeah. But, but everyone, when it was like, we're going to Iceland for my article, um, <laughs> everyone was like, oh. <laughs> like, do we have Wrong. to? It was like they were being sent on a mission that they I know. that they didn't well, want. I think it's because no one wanted to go on the vacation because they're not, no, none of them are speaking to each other. Yes. They can't stand to be in the same room with each other. And it's Iceland. At least if you're going someplace like warm where you're going to be on boats and like, yeah. have massages, it's one thing. But you're going to go to Iceland and like, I don't know what. See Bjork. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, go these are also like not world travelers. Like I feel no. like they could no. do Ireland, but like these are not, Iceland I think is way too adventurous for their this blood. Yeah, yeah. Can we just get him a house in Porto Vallarta I mean, and like call it, a day. call it a day? Yeah, go to Andale's, whoop it yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, I saw something really sad online today. <laughs> it was like I was on Vicky's um, 
Instagram, uh, Instagram story. And she was like, guys. Yeah, she had a story out today. Oh, yeah, she had a story out today. You didn't see the story? <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching my stories. I was watching my stories, my Vicky Instagram stories. And she's like, guys, I'm now doing whatever that service is where like she'll like say happy birthday to you and you could I'm sure you pay for it okay but she'll just like send you messages of encouragement or whatever you may need from Vicky but it made me sad that yeah sad. <laughs> just like that here's where we are like you know I don't know if it's like five you know like 50 so bucks a pop for this yeah but but you know just in her Instagram she was like I mean in that. terms of like the like branding and sort of the partnerships brand partnerships and ads Mm -hmm. like they've all done like vicky's has certainly been the worst it's been a struggle for her awful like what's ironic is i mean wines by wives vicky's vodka they just never could get off the ground but remember when she was running Coto insurance like from her home office and now she has i mean she still has that legitimate business Coto insurance is still alive and kicking i think so and i think i think it's going to be around for a while although i i do wonder like how is she is she still putting in the hours at Coto? I feel like, like she would must she be. be your insurance agent? Like, would she just get like, ugh, my it rained and my roof came in. I like, guess, will I get Vicky I guess I'm surprised phone? she never rebranded it to be like Vicky Gunvalson Insurance. Right. Do yeah. you know what I mean? That there was never I mean, I guess Skinny Girl isn't really like Bethany's name, but it just seems insane to me that it always remained Kodo insurance <laughs> right. after a, 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 a guard gated community. Right. Like, like well, a, that's, but that's where she doesn't have any marketing skills. Yeah. Well, I feel like you want a housewife to give you gross bottled margaritas, but you don't really want a housewife oh, to God. sell you insurance. Yeah. So maybe oh, God, like no. having well, it be the Kodo only insurance. Thing of her past. That's actually really smart. That is the only thing from the past of Vicky's. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Her face has changed. Her body has changed her life has changed her husband has changed but that's the one constant i know Thank it's god Kodo it's still there <laughs> god, she, she'll the have one Kodo thing insurance. that she's you know what i'd see a spinoff of <sighs> the relationship between her and that secretary or office manager or oh. whoever yes. that woman was like that i would watch <laughs> forever see, we need a Kodo show it's like brianna michael vicky that reception not those kids so. not those kids and not that husband Who, not brianna's, brianna's husband oh brianna's husband's awful those kids are awful yeah kids are really awful like i can't with them no yeah i can't with any of that side of the family just brianna and vicky i'll watch but i don't want that angry angry michael husband. makes me uncomfortable i love him because he like you can tell he like doesn't want to be there it's it, like drives him crazy and like i'm really you know that he's energy. the reason for the whole franchise, Michael. The entire franchise. How is Michael. that? How is that? So there was originally I saw it on one of like the before they yes. were housewives. You've seen this, yes, yeah. Yes, so yes. A, originally Michael had seen an ad for the production company. Then they were going to shoot something about. Gina Kehoe, I yeah. think. No, it was, it was about. It was no, about. It was called Behind the Gates. Yes. Yeah, because Gina Kehoe's neighbor was the guy who started yes, the husband. Yes. And yeah. so Michael Gunvalson <laughs> was the one who convinced Vicky to shoot this thing because he wanted to be on camera. Really? What? So then Real Housewives started. Like they filmed a pilot. And I think it was called Behind the Gates and it was like JoJo or whatever. Yeah, Joe. Joe. Yeah. And Slade. Slade. And, Slade. you know, that woman who had terrible skin cancer. Yeah, lo- not Lori. Not Lori, um, but yes. Lori. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I think there was another Peggy, too, who like moved to Chicago. It was Peggy. Peggy, yeah. Or Patty. Yeah, or something. She had yeah. some really hard fake tits. Oh, and Shane. Really Keo, hard tits. Yeah. The um, dream of all dreams. Oh, and and there was something deranged about Shane Dr- Kehoe and also his father. Yeah, yes. Jim Kehoe. There was an anger there. There that, was an anger and a derangement yeah. in both of them. I was that terrified scared me. of both of them. But they were both very sexy. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, gorgeous. <laughs> yes. Gorgeous. So he, Michael was really the reason why this all started. Interesting. I didn't know that. That little sad little boy, <laughs> that boy devil. man. Now, I also want to talk. We talked a lot about OC. And guys, t- tonight's episode is just, we're just going to be all over the place because we have these two people in the same room. And I'm just so excited you're both here. So we're just going to talk and ha- have what happen happens. But, and we're going to go off course sometimes. But um, I want to talk about the fact that you're ghostwriting Erica Jane's book. And I want to talk about some details because okay. you just let us in. No, what's the question that you just posed? So Let's, during the break, yeah. I was asking you, Brian, like I thought a 
Well, which question? Well, the one about whether Erica Jane fucks her husband. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, mean, that question. I will say. Well, the question was, does Erica Jane fuck her husband? Um, that is when I tell people I'm working on the book. That's what everybody, what they want to know about the marriage. And we've, I've, I haven't met Tom. You have but, not? No, I have not. But okay. I've seen them talk on the phone together multiple times. Mm-hmm. I've talked to her about him at length and she just like really admires him is really proud of him is really attracted to his intelligence and his generosity with, you know, not with his money towards her, but to, you know, towards other people. His philanthropy. And, yeah. Uh-huh. And, and the, you know, he does the, you know, class action suits for victims of, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. all sorts of all things. Aaron Brockovich. Yeah. yeah. And, and she's just really attracted to him and she says that they're very affectionate and that, you know, he, was very supportive of her when she wanted to do Eric Jane. And, you know, she was very supportive of him and all of his legal Pursuits. life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and she spent, you know, several years kind of just traveling with him and being with him and going to and law being events. Mrs. Girardi. And, and being Mrs. Girardi. Yeah. And then she decided it was time to be Erica Jane. But um, yeah, no, they're the, they're the real deal from, wow. from what I can tell. Wow. And yeah. I said, I find him attractive. I do. I find him to be a sexy man. He is a very uh, handsome Danielle. man. I know, June. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and I have been told on this podcast by listeners that my se- <laughs> my sexual proclivities <laughs> uh, aim towards strange things. <laughs> a listener Look, said to me, too. "I get it." A listener entirely. literally tweeted at me that like we need Casey back because Danielle, your sexual weirdness is unchecked, <laughs> Casey. <laughs> <laughs> and I agreed. <laughs> no, listen, I will say this about Mr. Girardi. Like if he were to walk in this room and shine his light on me, mm-hmm. you know, and fully like give me his attention, I feel I would be nervous. Yes. I would be a flutter. Yes, exactly. So, and there is something I find very attractive about a man who cares about social justice and, you know, and mm-hmm. justice in general yes. yeah. and is going to fight for the underdog. So that I find really appealing. Exactly. So what's the problem? I guess there is none. <laughs> Actually. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, if Doug, okay, so if okay. Doug were from OC were to walk in right now, I wouldn't blink an eye. No. I wouldn't. But Mr. Girardi. Mr. Girardi, I would look alive. Yes. I would look alive. You'd do your best. You'd sit <laughs> yes. up. You'd take the I'd ladies out up. to play a yes. little bit. You'd bring them to the forefront. Pinch my cheeks a yeah. little. Put <laughs> <laughs> on your rouge. <laughs> I don't get it. Hike your skirt up. <laughs> yeah. I don't get to show you a cast. By many people, but Tom Girardi, I would be intimidated by. For I think sure. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think he he has like a presence, and you know, Erica cops to the fact that like, you know, sometimes he talks over her and gets impatient with her and you know and and she admits to all the things that people have seen on camera and have not liked but you know she she says it's it's part of being with a very successful man is that you know they have a huge ego and you know whatever but yeah whatever they have is working and um we can all only wish that yeah and so there's some great stories in the book about you know her moving to LA and meeting him when she was cocktail waitress and her early days in New York city. And, um, we were going through, she got a box of stuff from her mom's house. She kept like all this crazy stuff. And so we were going through that today and she was like telling me stories about where all the things were were from and so on and so forth. And there was a program from some place she was in when she was like 13 years old. And it was about, she might've been even younger. She might've been like 12 or something but it was about like a kid's concentration camp (laughs) was it I never saw another butterfly yes it was (laughs) I was in that (laughs) oh my god (laughs) oh my god you and Erica were in the same weird kitty concentration camp play (laughs) it's so crazy (laughs) It's such a strange little play. <laughs> I never saw it another is. butterfly. I never yeah. saw another butterfly. Oh my God. It was done with these re- real poetry from children that were in this oh my concentration camp called Therese. Yes. 
<laughs> it's so I'm laughing because I feel crazy. But um, <laughs> <laughs> not because you're laughing at the Holocaust. No, obviously, <laughs> everybody knows how I feel about this stuff. But but yeah, I know it well. I know many. Yeah. I I went out for the lead and did not and did not get the lead. And my father, God bless him, the girl who got it was um was older than me and like already gone through puberty like looked like a woman like had boobs and a butt and here I and my dad was like well you look more like you'd be in a concentration (laughs) 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 like as a compliment compliment, my father said that to me when I didn't get the part the lead part she looks healthy and and able she's the healthiest of horse (laughs) you fit right in (laughs) oh god bless my dad oh Oh, such a stage dad so lovely but anyway, that's really funny uh, and sad. <laughs> now, I'd like to move on shortly. We don't have a ton of time left. I, I've taken up so much of your guys' time, but I know our, our audience is going to be so thrilled just to have you both on the podcast. Now, June, you don't watch Dallas. No. You're missing out. You really? I actually have a trip coming up. I'm planning on getting to Dallas during and it. And don't bother with the first season. No. That's crazy. Just no. dive right in. Dive you don't right need in. it. You don't need it. If anything, like read a wiki page. June, just so you know okay. some of the page. Really? Don't take it on. Okay. Don't, don't take, take it, it on. on. Don't take it Don't take You don't have to take this it's on. It's so not like me to not see the whole canon, but. <laughs> no. You don't need it. You don't okay. need it. All right. Just don't. jump right in. <laughs> You can't, you don't need what you don't need. No. Uh, and you're okay. going, you know, on this trip of life, only, yeah, take, yeah, only yeah, carry yeah, what yeah. you need yeah, to travel carry. Light, travel, travel light, travel light. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll go into the second season. And I feel like Casey told me that about Ladies of London too. Like to I not didn't, do I started like season. third season of Ladies of London. I'm doing just fine. I started like four episodes before I ended and then they canceled that show on my ass before I could even <laughs> tell Jules from Julia Wait, from Julia from Ladies Jules. Ladies of London is canceled? Ladies of London is canceled. What? Yeah. I did not know. I haven't seen any of it. <laughs> you missed it before it even. <laughs> yeah, it's gone before it even came to you. And that feels. Casey's going to be very hurt by this. I have to let her know. It's gone. <laughs> Sorry. Is Casey going to be okay? I don't know. I shouldn't we tell her. She's like a little. Yeah, yeah. Until she's back from like maternity leave. <laughs> yeah, she can't handle like this. Your hormones child. are all over the place. <laughs> now this week we were. You don't know the players. There's a woman, Leanne Locken, who is unhinged. Oh, and she is. Born and bred for rea- the reality television arts. Wow. Yeah. Oh, she <laughs> and, is. And June, she will do anything to be on TV. She had gotten a full breast surgery and the next day headed out for a trip to Mexico because she did not want to not be on camera. Like and she is fully committed. As a result of that, she got a flesh eating bacteria. <laughs> And, and she, guess what? And that night, found out she got a flesh eating bacteria. That night went to a party. Yes. <laughs> And <laughs> a winter wonderland party. <laughs> I love this woman. She's amazing. She grew up in the carnival. She's a She's carny. A carny. <laughs> Wait, did you say she grew up in carnival? Yes. No, in, the, in, a, in, in as in a like, carnival, like a traveling, okay, a traveling carnival. carnival. I understand, but is it called like carnival? Just like in carnival? Just like like, oh, like I, I'm summering in Europe? Yes. Right. <laughs> exactly. She grew I'm, up at, I'm, like I'm I going to university. In carnival. <laughs> A carnival. The carnival? She grew up in Maybe carnival. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it is in carnival. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to ask Leanne Locke. Wait, she's a carny? She is a carny. She grew up on the circuit. Well, this makes all the sense in the world. Like, yeah. it truly does. Like, of course a carny is... Of course, this is how a carny be. You know, <laughs> this is like, of, of course. Wow. Yeah, and she's a gem and a jewel. Oh, she and is a gift. She's and, the only good thing about the first season, and mm-hmm. then and she they, came back ready to go. Yeah, and she's and she's in anger management, so she is a person that is trying to improve herself. She's the only right. one who has any sort of self realization. Yeah. Like she knows she's unhinged, and even her therapist, she was like. Like, her therapist will sometimes be like, "Like, do you want to do that?" Like, she was like, "I hate this girl. That's why I'm going to show up at her Halloween party as her." And she was like, "What? That's insane!" And she like said it to her therapist, and her therapist was like, "Do you think you should do that?" And she's like, "I think I should." <laughs> <laughs> like, like she just like she's trying to better herself, and yeah. that struggle is real, and it's fun to I watch. Love that. Yeah. Oh, she's amazing. And so then this episode, they th- there's some sort of fight. I don't even remember what the fight is about. So there's this one woman, Cameron, and mm-hmm. she um, 
Danielle has likened her to both a White Walker. A White Walker from Game of Thrones. And Game of Thrones. And um Tom Petty. Did I say that? No, there was <laughs> R.I.P. guys. R.I.P. Um I like to liken her to um the Mars Attacks woman with the blonde hair. Yes. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like yeah. she's just she's like obsessed with pink and you know, she whatever. sort of she talks, like it takes her a long time to say anything. <laughs> Like, and she's chewing her words like it's a big steak. Like, she's a lot, but she's everything. Like, yeah. she's fun to watch. She's a terrible human. She was like, we're at this party, and they don't even have real glasses. It's all plastic. And then Leanne, of course, throws a glass, and she's like, well, that's why it's plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the most genius thing oh, I've ever heard. I laughed out loud. Oh, me too. Dallas makes me LOL IRL. Oh my God. Yeah, it's, oh my God. It's I need so to see crazy. this. And then there are two women that talk like this. They have the little baby voices. <laughs> and it is shocking to ha- hear two yeah. grown women with children of their own does talk they, like this. Does Leanne Lockhart have children? No. no. Okay, thank And God. she should not. Yeah, that's no, right. No, she should. It would be not. hard for me. Yeah. And she is the only one on, in the entire franchise. And I'm talking even more than Gretchen. And Christine Butte. You know, sometimes you would go to Gretchen Butte or Christine Butte's house and you'd be like, this is kind of sad. Like, oh, yeah. uh, compared she's to. still in that townhouse, yeah. mm-hmm. by the way. Yeah. With Slight <laughs> taking on his junk. Um, but <laughs> Leanne Lockett lives in, like, just a little house. Like, yeah. in a way, like, that I would live in. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, that us normals. And that's right. unacceptable on one of these shows to live yeah. like the rest mm. of us. It's, I know. It's, it's like, like why am I Valley tuning in? Ranch. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like, and decorated fully carpeted in a way that you never see like not new um not new kitchen you know how like in every house it's like oh, a totally yeah. new kitchen and probably made really poorly but it doesn't matter because it shows up on camera yes. in a way that like yes. photographs kind of well but like, yes, like I feel like dust. Melissa Gorga's house is like falling apart yes. oh yeah like and it's all hollow yes. and it's so yes. poorly made it's by all the veneer Gorgas. and super yeah. girls yes. where Lance is probably really well made but it's all like it's worn in it's yeah. lived in she has like a bark around her yeah like wow, and so she's she lives she lives truly her life is true like she's not pretending to be something no. she's not which she's, is refreshing right mm-hmm. she's a, a legitimate crazy person yeah wow. and she's married Dallas to a good. cop married to a cop and then well someone says like you know how like on the housewives like vicky will never admit to doing anything wrong like she'll be like yeah well i said that but i but you did this like she'll like leanne's like you're right i did say your husband was sucking dick but i was mad (laughs) 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 like you know what i mean it's like refreshing to her her kind of like i I said this and it was probably wrong but I was angry at the time you you hurt my feelings and like you're just like okay it's kind of like hard to be it's mad hard to and come back like, to and she literally threatened someone's life she's like I did threaten to kill you but I didn't mean it <laughs> like it's great I don't oh, understand wow, how exciting. Leanne Locken is so crazy and is so awful to all of those women but none of them have beef with her no. like they all kind of like I mean I don't know the way you guys are doing her like I'm finding her really charming yes oh, oh charming but crazy. bonkers and terrifying yeah like she Sounds like it. and I've said this on the podcast but June has to hear this but behind a door one time when she was about to get her breast surgery so she doesn't know anyone one's listening okay she has you know they should sometimes the yeah. housewives forget and they shut what the door she, she says she was talking about one of the other women's carry and she's like you know i didn't grow up with a lot oh she no she says well i know about him i heard about him her husband i heard boys tell me he gets his dick sucked at the roundup and, then, <laughs> and she goes and i didn't grow up with anything in my silver spoon in my mouth i grew up with things in my hands and those things were not knives they're just hands but they work just as well <laughs> what are you saying right it's insane. insane like she'll kill you with her bare hands like yeah yeah she will kill carrie with her bare hands oh she's, she's a what an, she's, she's an only child, only child. april says mm-hmm. yeah that was, a, that was a crazy monologue. Yeah, I, I mean, yes. and it's not even, I didn't do it justice either. Like, you could find it online, and it is, 
as I've said, I know on the podcast many times, like it, we'll be doing this in monologue workshops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Danielle's yeah. reel is actually just that monologue just, now. It was compelling. Right. It's yeah, and she's amazing. So this week, one of the girls that talks like this had whose marriage is falling apart um, completely. Her husband hates her Which too. Which one? Uh, Brandy. Yes. Um, and her she children had a, are awful. Oh, I kind of like those two little girls. <laughs> I don't know. They remind anyway. they remind me of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. She threw a winter wonderland party and everyone was fighting. Everyone was hating each other at it. One girl came on an iPad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because she was away. She was, she away. was like on an iPad robot. Deandra. <laughs> so, oh my God. <laughs> So she just rolls in, but like on the iPad. Right, like with her face room. on the iPad, and she could control it with whatever it was. This is insane. <laughs> yeah, it was it super was weird. It was insane. The future is here. <laughs> the future is here, and you can go to a party on an iPad robot. And it looks like Deandra. Yeah, and so a that was A grown woman with an apostrophe in her and, name. And then one woman accused the other woman, because we knew that... Carrie, the woman that's husband might be getting his dick sucked at the roundup. Um, we knew that they had met because she was his nurse while he was still married. But it came out this week that she also was his babysitter for his children. Oh, God. like with his ex-wife. Does that like... I don't know. It it seemed like a bombshell to me that wasn't really a bombshell. Well, it's like you're already the nurse. Yeah, like, but I think once the children get involved, people feel a little creepy. like it because you let someone into your house with your children. I think it feels yeah. like even more of a betrayal. You know, it's like yeah, you watch my children. Agree. And then her defense was, yes, I babysat them, but not a lot. I mean, I sometimes was with the kids. <laughs> it was just like, oh. Okay. It was just cliche and cliche for Carrie. I mean, the nurse and the nanny. Yeah, it was kind of, but it was, you know, Dallas is really interesting. It's worth you getting to get on. And when Leanne broke a glass and then she said, well, that's why you have plastic. And then they all sort of continued on as if nothing happened. Oh, and when Leanne was uh, diagnosed with flesh eating bacteria, she just goes, why me? (laughs) (laughs) I need this in my life. Yeah, oh, yes. so so just you know, while you're in Montreal, if you could get on that, I'm I, I, going. I'd like, I promise you, it's 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 good work that yeah, I need to do. I think you, I think you'd like it. Yeah, guys, wow, thank you for coming on it. tonight. Thank you, thank so you, much Brian for J. Me. Moylan, thank you for coming here, both of you, yep, to your house, to my home, and Brian J. Moylan, your wonderful vulture reviews. Everybody should read them. If you're not, you're not really a fan of this. Thank you. And also, uh, Erica, Jane, and I are doing a discussion at Vulture Festival. Nice. Wow. On the 18th here in LA. Sounds amazing. I'll be and there. And then on Tuesday, the 24th of October, mm-hmm. um, I work with a charity called Here for Drama, and we do like staged readings of Housewives episodes. Oh, and we're doing it. the <laughs> Halloween classic Scary Island episode. Uh, of course. Um, the 24th at Littlefield in Brooklyn nice. and that's a here for drama.com and Julie Klausner is going to be there ah. Greg Bennett friend of the podcast Love. and of mine so it's going to be an all star crew so if people want to come check that out and June you have how did this get made anything else sure. you want to talk about um I mean I'll just say that uh n- organization I've been working with is called Sister District where mm-hmm. you can adopt a red district and try to flip it blue if you are living in a safely blue area. Um, so check it out. Yeah. Google Sister District, something will come up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds awesome. And yeah, thank and you it's for amazing. being involved in that. And I know yeah. that you've been active and went with Jane Fonda to um, flip the district, district yes. down here and did some amazing work. And I'm so proud of you and impressed Thanks, with Danielle. everything you're doing. It's been, again, it's taking my time away yeah, from I know. Again, this, which doesn't feel you. great. Oh, yeah. Less important but, work. And guys, don't forget Largo show this Wednesday, the Halloween show. So come on by. We're so excited to come in costume. We are going to have the most fun. June, you were in that show last year. I am so sad I can't come I to know, it this year. I know, we're so year. sad a, you couldn't be it's there. It's really devastating. I, it, it is. It was so much fun. It was the most fun. It was the <laughs> most fun <laughs> I you came with had Vicky's in neck, a long time. And you came as Vicky in <laughs> neck brace from Glamis. It was... Just, it, it felt right. It was a dream. <laughs> it was. No, thank you. April, coming with the facts, always. Um, Thank you, Lyra. Thank you, Luz. Thank you, July. Thank you, Earwolf. Thank you, our audience. We'll see you next week with Casey. We'll be back. Um, Thanks, guys. Bye.